Well, my family came to Braidwood in 18, for, early 1840s and we've uh, been farming cattle, horses and sheep uh, ever since then. That was 178 years. Here we were just recovering from the 82 drought and so I was pretty much into regenerating pastures and I was looking at uh, the latest technique which was spray grazing and um, spray sowing and, and that sort of stuff and spray topping which I thought was the, the latest program and, and it seemed um, a lot better for the soil structure than ploughing and that sort of stuff. So we were, I was traditionally spraying, sowing and set stocking. And then uh, what we discovered was a friend of mine rang up and went into the figures of that process and he asked me then what, it, how much did it cost to spray and sow a new pasture, which we had to do every five to seven years. Uh, and the cost was $240 a hectare and with our set stocking it only lasted five to seven years and then he asked the big question how long does it take to get your money back on that investment and I hadn't done the figures he had and it was 10 to 12 years so basically we're all going broke slowly and that's when we this mate Rob and I went out to look at uh, new ways and we came up with holistic management and so I uh, got rid of the spray rig and the uh, tractor and uh, started using my stock to change my or m maintain my pasture effectively and uh, I don't have to re-sow any longer now so my costs have dramatically dropped and slowly my production's increasing per hectare per 100 mils of rain. The biggest change was when I took over this place, there was 12 paddocks, and now I've got 53. So I was uh, fencing it up, and I've changed the design of those since my early days. But initially, we did them across the slope, and I tried to have the stock, and I'd move the stock. So I bunched all my stock into one or two mobs, preferably, and we moved them depending on the season. It's every three days, every week, uh, and uh, move them around. So it's, the biggest change is having 90% of the property resting or recovering whereas when I first started farming the same way my father did we had paddocks where that mob of stock lived in that paddock their entire life. We brought them in, marked them, put them back again or brought them in short and put them back again and that was the Devon paddock or the Romney paddock or whatever and they stayed in that paddock for their life. When I was managing big mobs of sheep here I had Oh, when I was managing the family farm, I had 30 mobs of sheep to bring them in and drench them. You had to bring each mob in and try and not get them boxed, drench them, get them back to their paddock, and then and you needed some very good dogs, and it was very hard work. Now, with them all in one mob, you bring them in, do them all in one day, put them back, and you've got the next 30 days free. Jilmatong used to have an erosion gully that went right down the whole centre of the farm. And basically all the water ran into that erosion gully and straight out to sea, taking with it the surface fertility with it. What I didn't realise at the time, I've since learned, is that the water that ran onto the land and soaked in, picked up any fertility out of the soil and went into that erosion gully and out. So Peter showed me um, how to uh, reinstate the chain of pond systems. So we put in 14 weirs down the erosion gully and that effectively put the plug in the water that was running out of the system. So you ended up that uh, the water that uh, ran off the surface ran into the weirs and they filled up and then the water started seeping sideways and so you keep the land hydrated and the grass on the sides of uh, my valleys now is growing. It also means that none of the water that used to pick up fertility and drain out of the system can do that anymore because the, once the land gets hydrated that uh, water doesn't leak out of the system, it just sits there. And so if you get then excess rain, it runs off the surface. So ever since I put in the leaky, leaky weir uh, chain of pond system that Peter Andrews designed for me, all water leaving the land has run off clear. No matter what sort of rain event we have, it runs off clear. Most of the, well, we've actually tested the fertility. The water running in, has got, uh, I think it was 12 parts per million of phosphorus in it, and running out it was four. 
parts. So we've stripped or harvested the fertility out of the water. And that's by using water plants, the fish, the yabbies and all that in the system. They take the fertility out. And then our, our idea is we get that fertility back to the tops of the hills. And the, the, the fish and yabbies and all that is harvesting that. The birds are taking that up to the top of the hill. And so now I said I designed my paddocks that way when I first came here up the slope. Now they're going that, uh, up the slope vertically. And the idea is that fertility is picked up from the bottom and taken to the top. So the cattle come and eat down the bottom, eat a bit of dry feed and then sit up in the shade of the trees on the top of the hill. The birds, the insects, everything's taking fertility back up. So we're trying to reverse the effects of gravity. My input costs have dramatically dropped. Uh, uh, my grass is growing earlier in the spring. In fact, I'm in a... <laughs> In a good season, it'll grow right through winter now, and that's because the soil's more alive, it's warmer, uh, and it's more fertile, and so the grasses can grow all year round. And my so my input costs are less, my production of grass is more, and part of the holistic management, uh, if you think when you've got 53 paddocks, you can see whether your paddocks are recovering behind you, and you can see what you've got in front of you and so you can make decisions early so you can end up selling your stock uh, earlier than uh, later.